Well, we have a whole bunch of vintage and antique Christmas ornaments. Welcome, I'm Hawaiian Shirt Papa. Sometimes with others, I visit a variety of antique, vintage, and thrift shops within Southern Ontario. Sometimes we don't get anything. Come tour with me vicariously. Hello, and welcome to another tour by Hawaiian Shirt Papa. This time it's the part four of the one-of-a-kind antique mall and we're on this doing the second part of this second floor uh, I, the first part is primarily in the it starts in the the annex which has a couple of aisles more than one section but it also has two aisles in the last section and then we started to go across and do about a third or a quarter of the main aisle of each one starting at the back going towards the front so this is still inside the annex this particular scene and so is this one these are in the aisle between the main aisle and the main annex aisle there's this smaller aisle in both second and third floor like this kind of like the link area for between the annex and the main store <clears throat> so there's such a variety of items that are being offered by the various vendors you, you just can't forecast what will be there from one visit to the next so the last one I posted was about three months ago, but there's no assurance that any of the stuff that you saw in the first one is still going to be there. And the, even the vendors may have left and other vendors have come in. It's a, with, with 10,000 square feet, uh, it's kind of, or is it 100,000 square feet? There is a lot of people coming and going all the time. So there's a good good chance that you're going to see some changes regardless of how long you it's been since you've been there so there was some pyrex we saw there briefly there it is again uh, this one's got uh, milk glass some more pyrex there this is in the annex so it's almost that I spent more time in the annex than I did at this part, but it's not true. This was, uh, I made this one a slightly longer video. Didn't quite work out to split it into two, so I let it go for the slightly longer version. It's not as long as my longest ones, but it's getting close to there. We're going to see, uh, there was a bunch of different collectibles, toys at that point, I think. So some of these, you see a counter, it doesn't mean you can't go behind there, just that's the way they display their stuff into the main aisle. LPs of all sorts and a number of different vendors having uh, recorded music, whether it's CDs, LPs, cassettes, 45s even. Others are into uh, home furnishings. Uh, there's a few that have clothing, as you can see there. There's a probably collectible collector for every kind of thing that is being placed on offer at this place. It's just a question of having that person come through and find the item that they're looking for. If they aren't doing that, then they're using it as, uh, for example, repurposing it like a uh, music LP cover 
the LP itself might not be in great shape, but uh, sometimes they just wanted it for the artwork on the cover. Other times folks are using, uh, getting a piece of furniture and repurposing it to make it into something completely different, whether by using it by painting or by partially taking it apart. They all find some purpose for the items that they're, they're obtaining. Some of the vendors, these, this one's got books again. There was, there was a large bookseller on the third floor. There was a large bookseller on the second floor. I think he moved to the third floor at one point. So there's, there's a multitude of things to see. Some of these, I think there were some there that were handicrafts. And the signs. So not everything is absolutely vintage or some of it is handcrafts. So it's not, not so terrible that way. Here you're going up to a section with some clothing. Ceramics, Pyrex, glass. You find them all over the place. An individual vendor may have a sale on, as you see in the sign. And that's up to the vendor as to what the percentage of the sale is. Uh, it doesn't matter. You don't have to get it marked down or anything. They know what the cash. It, it's in their system. And they automatically marks it down. Uh, as long as it's from that particular booth. Sometimes people will place things from another booth into the one that you happen to be looking in. And you're thinking, oh, I just got a great deal. Well, it didn't originate in that booth. So it goes according to the sticker, has a number on it, and the number tells them what booth it came from. So don't get fooled just because something was located in the booth that it's from that booth. So don't, um, don't create yourself a, a distress any sort. Here's a section of books, quite significant. It was in the middle of the second floor. Sometimes the people will buy it, not for the artwork in the frame, but for the frame itself. I've had some items placed on sale on that basis. Yeah. Knowingly so. It may have just had a cheap print in it, but it was a valuable frame for somebody to use for something else. It was a good size. We've also sold in the past some empty art frames. That's a case where either it fits or it doesn't, or you have equipment to be able to adjust the size. I don't have that equipment, but some folks do and love to do that kind of thing. Here's a collection of cassettes and LPs. You'll even find gaming cartridges in some booths. That's a large vase. Musical instruments. I've seen violins, guitars. Some more books. Sometimes you find books of music. So we're about halfway through in, of the this video and um, we're per, there's a lot more LPs to and they also find um, comic books in a similar type of setup. Model cars in there, Art, glassware, different colors. I 
Here's a toy collection. New in box, that's from what it looked like. Crokinole board. Booth of toys and uh, model kits. Briefly saw me there if you knew what you were looking for in a mirror. Just to give you an idea, it took about an hour of walking to get through this portion of the floor the way I am. And I'm not stopping to take any particular close note of any items. So keep that in mind if you're visiting, that it will take quite a bit of time. Uh, by the stairs where they have the, uh, the staff are stationed by the stairs coming up. You can often find us uh, cool drinks that are available. Keep in mind though that the washrooms for the men are on the second floor, the women's is on the first floor, and the um, accessible washrooms on the first floor also. So you can be there. Uh, it can get pretty warm up there. They do have windows and doors open, so it does help them cool it down. Um, but when it's very hot weather outside, ah, we're back to LPs. When it's very wet, hot weather outside, it will be pretty warm inside. There's the comic books. Our chest. Clothing. Accessories. All kinds of things that you'll find here. You never know what you find. There's some cassettes. It may be just the one thing that you're looking for. There was some amber kind of glass Amber just moments ago. And coin collecting display there. Some home furnishings here. There's another one that has a collection of different glass. And there was some ephemera there. We're coming into another one that has toys and comic books. Now those are probably the comic, the toys that are con connected to the, to the uh, comic books. Here's another one of LPs and comic books. No, no, you're not seeing the same one repeatedly. These are all distinctly separate. They may not even be close to each other, but they're on the same floor in this case. There are ones on, on each floor, you'll probably find LPs. You may find a difference in prices according to the floor as well. Sometimes the upper floors are less expensive than the lower floors. There's no assurance of that, of course, but I've noticed a bit of a trend in that sense. Some more decor pieces. Some of these are kitchenware. Some of them are purely ornamental. There's some fabric. This, this jewelry is generally on the first floor, so you don't generally find it on the upper floors because it needs a lot more staffing. Some items are in glass cases. These are accessible used with, with assistance from the folks who are based on that floor. There's at least two based on the floor. I think on weekends they may have three, maybe four, depending on the floor. Some things you don't always see, like a globe and mail rack. Those look like VHS tapes there. Then some jewelry there. So yes, there are some jewelry. Not to, not to the extent there is on the first floor though. It's 
more LPs. There was a lot of music LPs. Some costume jewelry. Some toys. There's a whole booth of various different toys and some other collectibles as well. We're getting close to the end here. We're closer to the out to the stairs. There is an elevator to be expected, but COVID really put a damper on all kinds of things, including getting employees for the contractor to install a, a, a new elevator. The shaft was there, it was a former freight elevator, and they had done some preparatory work, but they, uh, they stopped because of COVID, and now it's stalled. Previously, uh, some clothing. Previously, uh, some people could be taken up using the freight elevator, but the uh, TSSA put a kibosh on that. Well, it is a, a over a century old the elevator, so they didn't want to have anybody get injured potentially. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and perhaps a tinkle on the bell. Take care. Bye bye. Ha <laughs> ha